Well, now to another once great industrial city which has fallen victim to official incompetence and broken promises. It's Stoke-on-Trent and the issue is not jobs but houses. When we were all living in Gordon Brown's fantasy world, the Labour government made grand commitments to people living in substandard housing. Then came the collision with economic reality and budget cuts from the coalition. As a consequence, for citizens of Stoke and of some other places, the promise of improvement has actually ruined lives. Paul Mason reports. Pauline and Barbara live on Newport Lane. Nobody else does. Mark and Sharon are trapped in a home that's falling down. It's the last one on the block. Junior and Natalie live in a street plagued by crime. This is Stoke-on-Trent. Once an industrial heartland, its heart has been ripped out. Hundreds of terraces have been demolished, hundreds more stand derelict, all because of a scheme called Pathfinder. And then Doreen lived at the end here. Yeah. Jeannie Key lived yeah, there as well. Yeah, there, that opening yeah. is there. Yeah. And Doreen had only just spent a load of money on oh, her house, hadn't yeah. she? Where are they all now? The answer is uh, rehoused, for well, some evicted. And the promise was that new homes would be built here. Where's the new houses? We haven't got any. any. Why? This is what we they won't, won't know why. Invest in. They've got no money, they say. I mean, I know they've got no money, but as for a private buyers, they, don't, they won't invest any. You see, we've it's... had things put in the paper, what they're going to build, it's, it's but a... nothing's materialised at all. House building has stopped. Demolition is delayed. What was supposed to be the planned regeneration of a community has turned into a nightmare. We've been degenerated, not regenerated. And we used to be a community. Right, Paulie? Yes, yeah. we had a, they, they had their own shops. Yeah, we did. It was it. We it had was, the butchers. Yeah, we it was had the life grocers. in itself. We had everything. Yeah. We got the club. Yeah, yeah. We want it back as a community. We want, you Bring know, some, some life back. into the place instead of rats running all over the place. Do you think you will live to see this place come back as a community? No, no, no. There is no community no. left. This is no story of gradual decline. It's a story of a master plan, of social engineering, of spending cuts and a broken promise. Stoke was already in trouble. Thousands of pottery jobs were moved offshore. Property values had collapsed, even as in the rest of Britain, a property boom took off. That made Stoke an ideal candidate for Pathfinder. Oh, look at that. In 2003, Labour's Deputy Prime Minister, John Prescott, launched the Pathfinder plan. 90,000 terraced houses in seven cities would be cleared and replaced with new build housing. Thousands more would be renovated. Property values would rise. But last October, the coalition, which had always opposed the scheme, cancelled it. The promised homes will not be built. Pathfinder is over. But not for those who still have to live in the middle of all this. It's not nice. It's, it looks dead rough. You look like you're here and living here on your own. There's no one here. They'll walk down the street and say, what are you doing living around here? This couple have been trying to move, but are stuck. Crime's just through the roof. It's, it's scary to live here, really. We have to leave the lights on in the house uh, all the time, even, even throughout the night, just so that people know we're still in here. If you smell smoke, you instantly think next door's on fire because they set in fire to every empty house and it's not being dealt with at all. Um, so it's just constant fear, isn't it, really, of what, what could happen. So there's nobody who lives here? Uh, there are. There are people on both sides that, that, that live in this. And uh, Brendan Nevin is a housing expert who helped implement uh, the Pathfinder scheme. He thinks the sudden cancellation is putting lives at risk. Uh, well, as you can see here, the, this was... Um, sealed up uh, only last week. Um, that is an arson risk. There is somebody living next door. If somebody, so somebody get, lives there? Yeah, and if they get in, if somebody gets in there and torches that, these people are in real trouble. Clearance areas are fundamentally dangerous places and they need to be got down very, very quickly. Even if we can't 
rehouse people and rebuild things, why can't we just get the last people out and just make it safe? Well, well at the moment, there's no money to buy people out. Uh, the money was cut off on April the 1st. There used to be money to manage these places and clean them, and now that money's gone as well. Pathfinder was scrapped eight years in to a 15-year agreement. Those who drew the blueprints assumed even if the coalition scrapped the scheme, existing commitments would be met. We have no plan B, we have no guidance. Uh, we've been left really to our own devices with the money being pulled at very short notice. Instead of half a billion pounds, Stoke now has maybe five million to put the scheme to rest. And after that, it'll rely on market forces. There's always a consensus um, between political parties that you have to finish things that have been started, even though the policy may change. There was a consensus about ensuring that no place was left to die and that there would be no place where the market wouldn't work. We seem to have abandoned that now. There seems to be quite an explicit policy whereby places will live or die by the market. And this is a massive change in British political history. Where it was done with foresight, Pathfinder worked. The Mere council estate used to be one of the roughest in Britain. It was plagued with vandalism, dodgy pubs and crime. But Maggie Carter sorted that out. She was part of a community group that helped shape the Pathfinder project on the ground. It was difficult because of the apathy. But once um, people realised that they were not no longer going to be trodden on, that they were going to be talked to and consulted with, they started to come out and get on board. Here, the rebuilding was done within a short time scale. The result, new and refurbed homes on the site of previously substandard ones. Was it ever in the back of your mind, what happens if the money runs out? Yes. So you thought about it? Yeah. Why didn't the people planning Stoke think about it? Um, I don't know. But with the money gone, she's worried that even here, progress could be reversed. I'm not as stupid as to say that um, things couldn't go back to what they were because I'm I am aware that we're on a knife edge. Do you mean socially? Do you mean in terms of crime, drugs? Yeah. Even here? Yeah. Hanley in Stoke was where Arnold Bennett chronicled the lives of Stoke's potters. The potteries are slimmed down now to a few niche businesses, but many remember the heyday. Five and four, 54. At the community four, centre, they're 54. trying to keep things jolly. One and one, Lexi 11. <laughs> but this is the last bingo session. Lee, the community worker employed under the Pathfinder scheme, is to lose his job. The money has run out. Personally, I think we should have taken a section, demolished it and rebuilt it. And then the people that still lived here could have moved on into those properties and then continued in that way, you know, as a, like a decant sort of process, build and move, build and move. And uh, I think anybody that you may speak to today would say that to you. Uh, that's where we feel it's gone wrong slightly. Because they've demolished and they haven't built. That's right, yes. So um, people are stuck? Yes, yeah, and, and it's split the community. <laughs> Pathfinder was supposed to revive places like this. Now, in 12 cities across the Midlands and the north of England, the scheme is winding up, and communities are left high and dry. What's happened here is a disaster. One explanation for it is incompetence by a Labour government that simply refused to listen to local people. Another explanation is spite, for there are many here who believe the coalition government simply does not care what happens to the blighted cities of the Midlands and the North. The government, the council, would they like to live in this mess we're living in? The, I mean, you feel like a second-hand citizen. Yeah. Beyond the distress and poverty on these streets, what's left of them is a deep distrust. Never again will the words regeneration and renewal mean the same. Paul Mason and the Department of Communities offered us this statement. Despite the best efforts of local communities, the previously centrally controlled housing market renewal program didn't work, resulting in large-scale housing demolitions, pitting neighbour against neighbour and, in some cases, trapping families in abandoned streets. The coalition government has announced a £30 million lifeline for the areas that have been worst affected. Uh...